Well, hello everyone. Greetings first of all to the members of our Pilgrim Church family and greetings as well to any visitor who might be tuned in for this video. This is Danny. I'm here on behalf of all the elders at the Church of Christ in Pilgrim with this week's uh, weekly opportunity for reflection and discernment or the word. This is for posting on Wednesday, May the 22nd of 2024. Bible Nobodies Who Became Somebodies is the title of a 2004 book written by Lance Wubbles and Terry McDowell. I recently purchased it in electronic form for reading on my Kindle device. I was so impressed with the material that I based this current series of weekly devotional studies upon some of the stories taken from that writing. Today brings us to our ninth ser session of this series. In the author's introduction, they explain the motivation behind the writing of this particular book. Quote, Many of the biblical characters we often read about were powerful leaders and heroes, such as Moses, Elisha, Daniel, the great Apostle Paul, and John on the island of Patmos. But others, often overlooked by us, lived their lives in what some would call the obscure shadowlands of insignificance. Barzillai, Ahithophel, Hadad, Hogla, and Lydia. They are the lesser known people we find tucked here and there in the sacred pages of scripture. God used people from all walks of life, not just the biblical superstars we are most familiar with. He spoke of them intentionally, and though we might consider them Bible nobodies, they truly allowed themselves to become somebodies. Now there are three segments that comprise each Bible character story that we are looking at. The first segment is a reading of the passage of scripture that introduces us to that week's character of interest. The second segment is a brief synopsis of that character's role as recorded within God's ongoing story. And the third segment, is a life lesson to be gleaned from that character's story. A lesson that will hopefully be both inspirational and encouraging to all of us. Here are some brief review of the eight lessons we have covered so far in our series. Our first lesson was Abigail's story, which it was the nobody whose husband was a fool. That was followed by Ahithophel's story, the nobody who thought David was his friend. Then came Bartimaeus' story, the nobody who wouldn't stop shouting. Next was Pharaoh's unnamed daughter's story, the nobody who couldn't resist a baby boy. Then we have Dorcas's story, the nobody who could sow like lightning. That was followed by Eliezer of Damascus' story, the nobody who nearly won an incredible inheritance. Then the unnamed Grateful Leper's story, the nobody who remembered his manner, manners, and then last week's lesson, number eight, which centered upon Hannah and her story, the nobody who gave up her heart's treasure. Our life lesson from her story was that Christians should remain devoted to prayer and perseverance. Even when we do not see an instant answer to our prayers, we should not surrender but rather press on against all odds and for however long it might take. So today's Bible Nobody Who Became a Somebody is another Old Testament character by the name of Jethro. His story is entitled, The Nobody Who Knew How to Meddle the Right Way. Here's how scripture introduces us to Jethro. We read this in Exodus 18 verses 13 through 18. And I have chosen the Common English Bible translation. The next day Moses sat at a, as a judge for the people, while the people stood around Moses from morning until evening. When Moses' father-in-law Jethro saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, What's this that you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone while all the people are standing around you from morning until evening? Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. When a conflict arises between them, they come to me and I judge between the two of them. I also teach them God's regulations and instructions. Moses' father-in-law said to him, 
what you are doing isn't good. You will end up totally wearing yourself out, both you and the people, these people who are with you. The work is too difficult for you. You can't do it alone. Now here from the book serving as our reference is a brief review of the role Jethro played, a role that led him to become a somebody within God's story. The work that Moses attempted to do through his own strength gives us a clear picture of the strong character of the man. The second chapter of Exodus gives us three examples. First, when he lived in Pharaoh's court, he undertook to settle a dispute between an Egyptian and a Hebrew. In his own strength of character and justice, and he ended up killing the Egyptian. He later saw two Hebrews fighting with each other, and again he tried to interpose and to solve their problems through his own strength, putting his life in jeopardy and forcing him to flee the country. Later still, after he had fled Egypt, he came upon some shepherds mistreating the daughters of a man named Jethro. He yet again took action by himself and delivered the maidens from their oppressors. This event actually would have a positive result on the life of Moses. It would take 40 long years of training on the backside of the desert for Moses to learn that true strength comes from God alone. There is no question that he had learned to depend upon God for strength. Otherwise, he never would have been able to face Pharaoh and to announce God's judgment on Egypt for not releasing the people of Israel. By the time of the passage that we just read as an introduction to Jethro, Moses was the sovereign leader of Israel and he had a tremendous weight of responsibility upon his shoulders, leading all these people to the promised land. As their leader, he administered all matters, great and small. It was indeed a daunting task. Think about the logistics of one million plus or minus people, all waiting in line to present their case before Moses, and as a result, all the time spent by him trying to settle disputes all while still relaying to them God's decrees and laws. His normal routine had become one of sitting all day long, from dawn to dusk, deciding every minor argument that might come up within a camp. Earlier, Moses had sent his wife, Zipporah, and his two sons, Gershom and Eliezer, to spend some time in her homeland. Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, had later sent word that he was coming out to bring Moses' family back to him and to see how things were going with Moses and the children of Israel. Since Jethro had shown respect and hospitality to Moses when he had fled from Egypt, Moses now returned the gesture, inviting Jethro to join him in his tent. Here we get some insight into Jethro's character, for while Moses rehearsed all that God had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, his father-in-law responded with the following. This is Exodus 18, verses 10 and 11 from the Easy English Bible. Jethro said, Praise the Lord! He has saved you from the power of the Egyptians and their king Pharaoh. Yes, he has saved the Israelites from the powerful Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all other gods. He destroyed the proud Egyptians when they were cruel to his people. Now one day during his visit, Jethro looked on while Moses sat and judged all the cases brought before him. After a while, he approached Moses and asked a simple question. What's this that you are doing for the people? Now, Jethro may have been a simple herder, but he had keen insight, and his common sense wisdom helped Moses see the consequences of all the exhausting work that went on uninterrupted every day, and in the process, helped to lift a great burden from Moses' overwhelming responsibilities. The worker in the midst of the battle is not always in a position to judge so completely and as certainly, certainly as is the wise man who observes the scene from a distance. And what was Jethro's advice to Moses? We turn back to Exodus chapter 18, this time verses 21 through 23, as we read in the English Standard Version. This is the words, these are the words of Jethro to Moses. Moreover, look for able men from all the people, 
men who fear God, who are trustworthy and hate a bribe, and place such men over the people as chiefs of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens, and let them judge the people at all times. Every great matter they shall bring to you, but any small matter they shall decide themselves. So it will be. So it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. If you do this, God will direct you. You will be able to endure, and all this people also will go to their place in peace. Jethro's character stands front and center, based upon his advice, as visible in the noteworthy aspects of his suggestion. First, he prevented partiality from nudging its way into the decisions by calling for Moses to appoint wise, God-fearing men as judges. Secondly, he stressed the importance of honest and upright judges, which would help ensure fair decisions by reducing the chances of bribery and dishonest gain. And thirdly, he demonstrated his humility by stating that all of his suggestions must first be submitted to God for his review, his approval, and his ultimate implementation. The counsel that Moses received was from Jethro inspired Israel with new life. From the moment Moses acted upon his advice, the latent, the, latent talent, the latent talent of leadership among all of Israel rose to the occasion. Because Moses listened to and heeded Jethro's advice, his life took on a higher calling of intercessor between them and their God, which proved even more beneficial for the people he was leading. The highest of all vocations is the spiritual calling. It is greater to pray for people than to rule over them. And here now is the life lesson the authors urge us to take from Jethro in his story. Whenever we come to a crossroad in life where we do not know what to do, we should, like Moses, be open to hear God's answer for whatever it might be that we are facing. Since God knows our lives intimately, his answers often come from those whom we already know, love, and respect, and who, like Jethro, with Moses, know us very well. The question might not be whether we are doing enough for God, but whether we might be attempting to do too much in a particular direction that is wearing us out. God has his Jethro's available and ready with that choice word of wisdom to pass along for the difficult situation we might be facing. Or we just might be called to be like Jethro ourselves, always seeking the Lord and ready to have the right word for someone in their occasion of struggle. The writer of Proverbs said it this way in chapter 25 and verse 11, as the New King James Version words it, it tells us, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Well, I hope that today's little video devotional about another nobody who became a somebody in the hands of God has been a blessing to your life. Remember, all of these video posts will continue to be archived online, and they can be found in a couple of locations. First, you can look in the Pigram, Tennessee Church of Christ page in Facebook, or you can check out the Pigram Church media site on YouTube. Now, I continue to encourage each of you to make a personal commitment to join me in doing both of the following every day between now and our next video session. First, I urge you to spend time every day in the study of God's Word. By doing so, you let God's Word speak to you in whatever place your relationship with Him might be. As God's Word speaks to you, speaks His will into your heart, you will be better fitted to serve as the arms of Christ. Secondly, I urge you to spend time every day in prayer with God. Doing so will provide you the opportunity to acknowledge His sovereignty, to thank Him for all the ways that you have been blessed by Him, to express repentance for and request forgiveness of your sins, 
and to intercede on behalf of those whom you know to be in need of God granting special blessings into their lives. If you are not already doing so, elsewhere, I invite you to join us in Bible study, in worship, and in midweek fellowship at the Church of Christ in Bigman. If you should pay us a visit, I can assure you that you will receive a friendly greeting and a warm welcome by our church family. I hope that you will be able to join in the next in the following weeks as we continue this study of biblical individuals whom some might characterize as nobodies. We will find that God's word again and again demonstrates how placing their lives in his hands allows them to be used by him as true somebodies. Plus, there will be a valuable lesson for us to learn along the way from each story. So, until our next story, next study rolls around, please remember I love each one of you. I ask you to take care and goodbye.